Hey guys, welcome back to Trek on the Tube. Today we're talking about Star Trek Discovery Season 2, Episode 12, Through the Valley of Shadows. This is my review and Easter eggs video. Let's jump right in. For starters, I gotta say I like the episode. I enjoyed it the first time, I enjoyed it the second time, and I still think of it fondly as of now. Much of it impresses me and satisfies me, and that's great. It's a change of pace from those two last Discovery episodes, which were kind of meh. As usual, I do have issues. There are very few episodes of Star Trek or just plain TV that I don't have issues with, but as I said earlier, I do like this one. Okay, so we get two main plots this time around. The first involves Captain Pike and the monastery on Bore. The second, Spock, Burnham, and Control, the evil artificial intelligence. Both of these main plots are quite interesting. Not only that, but they also move along quite well, which means the episode is able to keep you really hooked throughout its entire duration. I'll dive deep into Boref later, but considering I have quite a bit to say about that, we'll go into the control stuff first. I like Spock and Burnham going on an away mission, the characters work well together, and the actors have good chemistry. Also, the story that they're given really works, it complements their relationship, and adds weight to the threat that control poses, so it's all win. The moment you see Gant, that one dude from season 1, you know he's gonna die, because he's pretty clearly set up to be the red shirt of the episode, but the twist. Aha, the twist. I didn't see it coming, he was control all along. From the moment we met him drifting in space, he had already been taken over by Control and his nanobots. I love it. These are the kind of reveals that don't take away from a rewatch. They enhance them. See, the next time you watch the episode, since you already know, you look for signs or clues about his true nature. It makes things that much more fun. Alright, so the monastery plotline. I love the fact that Boreth and the time crystals and what happens to Pike ties in so much and so well to the rest of Star Trek. There are times to the original series with Pike's visions of the future, the next generation with the Boreth monastery itself, and even Voyager with the Klingons using and knowing about time travel. It's simply great world building. The episode adds so much lore to the monastery, for example, how it exists, sort of out of time, it's, it's fascinating. So the episode works with time crystals, which as ridiculous as it may seem, are actually based on real research. Which means the episode builds a sci-fi concept or explanation upon a real-world fact or theory. And that's as Star Trek as you can get. I mean, that's exactly what they do in Voyager's Distant Origins. Not only this, but they also use these time crystals to their advantage on multiple levels. We get a satisfying end to the story of Laurel and Tyler's son, Tanavik. We get glimpses of what is described as Pike's certain future, although I would argue it's most likely just a probable future and Tanavik got it wrong. I mean, what does he know? It's awesome to use Pike in this manner. It's awesome to use the fact that we know what happens to him in this manner. If you show the future of any other Discovery original character, you're essentially sealing their fate. You're telling the audience this is what happens to them, or at least something close. And in the long run, it'll limit the writers. There's much less creative freedom for that character arc. Whereas using Pike, that's very different. Considering we already know what happens, instead of limiting the creativity of the story, it adds emotional depth to his decision. It's a defining moment for the character and a very, very good play on Discovery's part. Double thumbs up. Generally speaking, the episode delivers some great visuals. Some of the CG felt a little weak at times, but at the end of the day, it's not shockingly bad, so it doesn't matter to me. The beauty shots of the ships are wonderful, especially when Laurel turns up in a glorious D7. The exterior shots of the monastery were breathtaking, and they felt very Klingon. The sets were great as well, or rather should I say the location shooting. The performances worked as well. Special shout out to the guest actor Ali Momin, who played Control pretending to be Gant. I mean, it may seem like nothing, but the guy isn't technically just playing a one-off character. He's playing an AI that we've seen evolve and grow over the entire season. So even if we see him just this once, he still has to present us with some form of familiarity. Concerning the issues I have, they're pretty minor. Some are Discovery specific, some seem to be a more general Star Trek problem, like for example when Laurel and Tyler start speaking Klingon in Pike's Ready Room with a universal translator that is active, there's no reason for you to start speaking in Klingon, we should still be hearing English. Kinda makes no sense. The Discovery specific things are the reference to vegan steak. Isn't all food synthesized anyway, so I mean, it seems a bit ridiculous to talk about that. Also, these goddamn hollow communicators that are clearly not technology, they're just straight up magic. I mean, no one seems to know how they work. We can only see Amanda and not the room behind her or anyone else behind her because that's how it's supposed to work, but when Spock enters behind Burnham, Amanda can see him. I mean, can she see the entire quarters? The hallway? I, I, I don't know. It's just dumb. Also, I, I hate the way Burnham interrupts the captain and asserts things like she owns the place. Again, she's the main character, fine. But there's a hierarchy in place, and this kind of behavior is unacceptable. Data gives Worf a whole talk about this thing at some point. He, he takes him into the ready room. It's an iconic moment. 
Anyway, regardless, the episode is interesting. It has rewatch value and it's visually inspired. It's it's a good episode. All right, okay. Moving on to the references and Easter eggs I could spot, starting with everything Klingon related. This is a D7. D7s were the ships used by the Klingons in the original series and the animated series. Discovery had already shown us a very different D7 in Season 1, but also a holographic blueprint of this one earlier in Season 2. We finally get the finished product here. Frankly, it does look a bit more like a Katinka-class ship, which were essentially a more detailed version of the D7s used for the movies, but there's always ways to make it fit. Especially considering Katinka-class ships didn't come around long after D7s were introduced, and this is the Chancellor's ship. For all we know, this D7 is already modified to be a Katinga prototype. We carry on with the Boreth Monastery. It was first seen in the next generation. Some of these shots clearly show different buildings, but this is a hundred years before, so I don't know, maybe the buildings could change. It's on a mountain and there's snow, at least that works. The whole concept of the Klingons working with time crystals and time travel, though it is a bit of a stretch, ties in well with the Voyager finale in which we see a chrono deflector, a time traveling device invented by a Klingon scientist. Regarding Pike, we already knew the the reason he wound up disfigured and in a chair was due to a training exercise gone wrong. Here the episode shows us that. Or should I say a possible version of that. I know Tanavik says that this is his actual future, but the fact that the chair is different suggests it's not necessarily the exact same future. This is why I didn't take the time to complain about how the chair didn't need a redesign. Anyway, this whole sequence ends with Pike touching the glass during the accident and that's a pretty clear nod to Spock in The Wrath of Khan and Kirk in Into Darkness. Okay, there you go. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the episode as much as me. I hope you enjoyed my video. Remember to like, subscribe, share with your friends, and uh, as usual, live long and prosper.